Welcome to Books on Air, the podcast that tells the story behind the book. It includes insights from authors about how they compose their work, what inspires them, and what they hope you'll take away from their book. Here's your host for this episode of Books on Air, Suzanne Harris. Welcome to the Books on Air podcast. I'm Sloan Fremont filling in for Suzanne Harris. This is a podcast where listeners get the secret story behind every book. Joining me today is Helen Payne. Helen and her sister published their mother's book called A Curlew Cried. This book is a historical novel set from 1911 to the outbreak of the Second World War, where an English family immigrates to a farm in Western Australia, and they must endure many trials and tribulations. Helen, I want to welcome you to the Books on Air podcast. Thank you very much. Well, we're glad you're here. So let's start out by telling the audience, maybe tell us just a little bit about your mother and what led you and your sister to publish her manuscript. Okay. Um, My mother was a a wonderful woman. Um, She lived on a farm in the wheat belt of Western Australia. She wrote this book about 40 years ago, maybe more than that. And my sister did all the typing of it. It was written in longhand. Mm -hmm. And it's basically a story about her family and her life. Uh, We found out so many things about her after she passed. Um, It's like finding this um, manuscript in the filing cabinet. Mm -hmm. And it was just amazing. And I said to my husband, can we publish it? I'd love to publish this book. And Mm -hmm. we did. And then um, found out so many things about our mother that we didn't know uh, at the time. Yeah. And so what was that like to take her manuscript and and see it through to be published? What did that feel like for you and your sister? It was wonderful. It was was Mm -hmm. the most exciting experience and it was all I dreamed of. I just wanted to hold that book in my hand and to be <laughs> yeah. able to share it yeah. <laughs> to be able to share it with with the world because mm-hmm. it's a wonderful story and I'm not being biased I am a great reader myself and it was a fantastic book well so let's talk a little bit about the book and in my intro I talked about how it's set from 1911 to the outbreak of the second world war so can you tell us yes. a little bit of the highlights of the book and maybe where it starts and um Sure. What journey your mother goes yes. on. <laughs> um, yes, it's an English uh, family who come to Western Australia to take up farming. They've come from England. None of them know a thing about farming. And mm-hmm. honestly, they got a farm in the most remotest place in Western Australia and became farmers and were the pioneers of that time. They went through a lot of sadness, a lot of joy, uh, as you say, trials and tribulations in their life, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. outbreak. Yeah, and it was just a very good book. And so, was it based on your mom's life, or was there pieces of yes, it? Or? Yes, yes. After she passed away, um, we found out a lot of things, and that book was basically a history of her life, mm-hmm. which. Yeah, there were things we did. We didn't know that she was illegitimate. Um, she never told us at all. Mm-hmm. We found all mm-hmm. this out after she died, because uh, she would have been sworn to secrecy, which was really sad. Um, mm-hmm. So she sort of lived a lie for a long time. Mm-hmm. And it, it, finding that out, you know, those things out after she's already passed. Um, did you feel a sense of? closeness to her after after she was gone and, and the manuscript was published? Yes. Um, at the time when we, we first found out about it, um, we were quite shocked, actually. Mm-hmm. We were very shocked that she didn't even tell her own daughters. But mm-hmm. those were the times when illegitimacy was looked down upon um, and she never said a word. So for us, it was a really big shock that we were told that she had a different name and and it wasn't really her name at all and just things mm-hmm. like that. But having published the book and read it, I feel for her and I feel yeah. so sad for her that she had mm-hmm. to live like this. 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. And so tell us, let's talk about some of the scenes in, in the book. What are some of your favorite scenes that were, that were in the book? Oh, oh, there were so many. As I said, <laughs> um, this book will take you to every emotion that you have. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Aunt Maud, who is um, the main, main lady's sister in it, will give everyone a laugh. And I can guarantee you that everything that happened <laughs> in the book happened to this woman. <laughs> Uh, she should uh-huh. never have stepped foot in in the country at all. <laughs> she was a disaster, a walking disaster, and but it was true. Everything in it was true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even though it comes out as fiction um, because we couldn't use uh, true names, of course. Um, right. Sadness, yeah, the sadness of World War One, um, mm-hmm. not just for that family, uh, but for everyone around the world who was involved in it. Um, Mm -hmm. there's joy with children Uh, there's every emotion that you could think of you'll feel it and everyone has said to us where's the sequel we need a sequel Uh we just love it you can't leave us like this (laughs) yeah yeah well and so the title is a curlew cried what's a curlew it's a bird. It's a, a, a bird um, that's found or was found in the wheat belt of Western Australia. And it had a cry. It sounded like a, a person screaming. And it was oh. sort of supposed to be an omen of bad luck if you mm-hmm. heard it. Um, mm-hmm. I think now, well, yeah, they're just about extinct now. I don't think there's many left at all. But that's what oh. it was when, mom, when my mother lived there. Uh-huh. Interesting. I, I live in the U.S., so I, I wasn't familiar with that bird. Um, no, that's, that's, that's fine. That's, yeah, as I said, they're not, they're not, there's not many around anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you took your mom's manuscript, and had you read it prior? Like, did, did you know she had been working on it, like, when you were growing up? Or oh, was it... oh, yes. Yes, she was writing it, um, as I said, about 40 years ago, if not more. Mm-hmm. Um, and that I was probably too young to care, and yeah. <laughs> she wrote. <laughs> I didn't really know what she was writing about, but she did write it, and she got my sister to type it on an old typewriter. Um, mm-hmm. And poor Janet must have typed—I don't know—thousands <laughs> of pages over time. <laughs> and yeah, so it was a big book. It was, you know, it was a fantastic book. Mhm. And was it published as she wrote it, or did you both did you no, make any? No. It, the manuscript, um, when it was finished, got put away, um, got put mm-hmm. into a bag. And my mum, before she died, she came to live with us. Um, so all her stuff came with us, and mm-hmm. I put must have put this manuscript in the filing cabinet. And mm-hmm. I went to wean it out and found this bag with this book in it, um, mm-hmm. just typewritten, all in a mess, all over the place. And I thought, oh, that's mum's book. You know, it's been sitting there for like 40 years. And I thought, I asked Janet, I said, shall we publish it? So, you know, mm-hmm. I'd love to do that for her in a tribute to mum. Mm-hmm. And, all the, yeah. Yeah, and all the pioneers, yeah. And it's amazing that, you still had it because you know how over the years, you know, when you move things and people move mm. and things get shuffled around, it's amazing that, that you still had it too. And you, you ran across it. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Um, I think it was something from heaven told us, you know, you yeah. do it. Yeah. Um, the papers, yeah. there was a couple of pages missing, which we got around and fixed up. Um, it was in a bit of a mess, but we fixed it up and sent it for publishing, and here we go. And it's published. Yeah. And I yeah. hope everyone well, enjoys it. Yes, mm-hmm. I, I really hope yeah. everyone enjoys it, and, and I'd love some feedback on it. If uh, I'd love to know what people think of it. Right. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit more about the book. What, what are some words or themes that you would use to describe it? Oh, historical. Mm-hmm. Australian history, historical, uh, goodness, mm-hmm. funny. It's very funny. Mm-hmm. Yes, very humorous. 
it's very sad in places. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I can guarantee you will you will laugh and you will cry in it. <laughs> yeah, that makes the you know all the take you through the roller coaster of emotions is always makes for the best. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you know it had me crying, it had me mm-hmm. laughing, um, mm-hmm. it had my my daughter crying and laughing. And mm-hmm. it wouldn't have been a book that she would have probably read, but she mm-hmm. did, and she absolutely loved it. Well, it's amazing. What surprised you the most publishing the book? Was there anything that stood out to you or maybe that you felt like um, you weren't expecting in that process? How hard it was to publish. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh it, was, it was a trial, actually. Yeah, don't think I could mm-hmm. go through that again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, just trying to find the publisher and, and get that all ironed out. With um, yeah. I've never published a book, yeah. so I don't know what the process is. <laughs> oh, there's so much paperwork to, that's involved in it, and mm-hmm. um, you, you're forever signing things and sending them off, and um, you know, and it's um, it's quite expensive to do it, but. It was a tribute mm-hmm. to mum, and we were fortunate enough to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. And I hope wherever she is in the great universe that she's looking down and she's proud of us for doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and like you said, such a great tribute to her story and, um, you know, all the effort she put in. And it's that that, yeah. that, um, that memory goes on, right? It, it lives on. It's just, um, yeah. which I love that. Yes. What would you say yes. sets this book apart from other books? It's facts, I think. It's facts, it's ve- and it's very, very well written. Um, Mum knew all about farming. She knew everything about farming. Um, so it's very factual. Her, mm-hmm. Yeah, even though it's a work of fiction, it's very factual. Mm-hmm. And it sets it apart because of the characters mm-hmm. in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That would definitely be it. Yeah. And who would you say the book would appeal to and why? Well, I'd say it would appeal to anyone who read it. Really. That's, that's how I feel. Because mm-hmm. uh, everyone we know who's read it, different age groups, different people, um, have absolutely loved it. And I think... I don't know, really. I probably adult to older yeah, adult to older people yeah. uh, would love mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. and anyone who wants to know, like the history of uh, Western Australia from mm-hmm. that era, I, I think they mm-hmm. would really, really love it. And as yeah, said, well, and it sounds it very yeah. It sounds like she was really able to tell a good story about you know yes. what was happening during that time. Definitely, definitely. She mm-hmm. lived it and she knew exactly what was going on, yes. Mm-hmm. What do you want people to know about your mom and about her book, A Curly Cried? I want them to know that she was a very smart woman. She didn't have a great deal of education. Uh, I think she left school, she school. Yeah, 14 or something. Mm-hmm. And she loved Australia. She mm-hmm. loved uh, She loved writing. Writing was uh, one of her biggest things that she loved. Mm. She loved my dad. She loved us. Uh, she loved the, the farm. She worked very hard. Uh, she looked after her grandmother mm-hmm. uh, until she died. And she was just a wonderful pioneer woman. She lost her own. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she lost her own mother when um, she was only 15 months old. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So it was it was a tough tough life, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, and she sounds like like a, just an amazing person, and I'm um, I love hearing that you know you took the manuscript and you guys got it published, and now the story lives on. Yes, yes, it's there now forever, and mm-hmm. that that was my greatest wish was just to hold that book mm-hmm. in my hands. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yes, I'm sure that that feeling was amazing. Nothing like that <laughs> when you see that something oh, like that. It, mm-hmm. it was. It was. It was just such a great feeling to have it yeah. published. 
Well, Helen, it's been a great conversation with you. I loved hearing about your mom. I loved hearing the story. I loved hearing that you guys took this and, and got it published so it could live on. And I want to thank you for joining us today. Um, before we close out, what do you hope the readers learn or take away after reading this book? I hope they take away how life was back then, mm-hmm. uh, where it was hard. hard okay. It was hard, but they still found happiness. They could still laugh. They could still have a joke. Um, mm-hmm. And, yeah, just, just I hope they take away every emotion, actually, and mm-hmm. realize what life was mm-hmm. and how lucky yeah. they are to live in this day and age. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, for sure. Well, Helen, again, I want to thank you for joining us. It's been amazing to talk to you. And um, Thank you. Th- you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, you can find more about the book, A Curlew Cried, on Amazon, and I'll link to the book in the show notes, so be sure to check that out. You've been listening to the Books on Air podcast, brought to you on webtalkradio.net. You can also hear this podcast on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, and Apple Podcasts. I'm Sloan Fremont, and I hope you'll join us for the next Books on Air podcast. Remember, you never know who's going to be here, and you never know what we're going to talk about. Thank you so much for listening.